Hello YouTube and welcome to Heathen Hacks. Ah oh, shit, here we go again. Two months ago I have created a sudo two-step or two-factor authentication thing that you can add to your RFID reader by using an HCO5 Bluetooth module, a transistor, a relay, and a custom Android app that I have made using MIT App Inventor 2. Click right here to check it out by the way. This video will be the sequel for that, or let's just say part 2. Today we are going to use two HCO5 Bluetooth modules, pair them together as master and slave using AT commands, and do some very basic stuff which we can improve upon in the future. We're also going to talk about how the code works and stuff like that. To be honest, it took me a while to start and finish this, because I got caught up on playing Deus Ex Mankind Divided, Assassin's Creed Black Flag, and have been procrastinating a lot. Then, right when I started my usual coding process, I hit a snag and was only able to finally finish my code with the help of some folks from the Arduino subreddit. Thanks guys! And as always, all the necessary links will be provided on the description down below. Let's go! Here are the things that we need. A pair of Arduino Uno boards. You can also use other boards if you want to. A pair of HCO5 Bluetooth modules of course. I chose this model because you can use either of them as a slave or a master. Some male to male and female to male jumper cables together with some hookup wires to make the wiring a little bit tidy. Momentary push buttons. A few resistors with varying resistance, specifically 1K and 2.2K ohms for the voltage divider of the Bluetooth modules, 10K ohms for the momentary push buttons, 200 ohms for the RGB LED, one common anode RGB LED, and of course, a breadboard. Okay, so the very first thing that we need to do before we proceed with the Bluetooth stuff is to check and see if our non-Bluetooth simple circuit together with our simple code will work. Again, the link for the codes and schematic diagrams are all on the description. For this test, we're going to use a common anode RGB LED in some momentary push buttons. These buttons will control each of the three LEDs on our RGB LED. One button for the red, one for the green, and one for blue. Now, let's get our breadboard and proceed on the wiring phase. Put the LED right here. Remember to leave a space between it and the positive rail for the hookup wire. Connect the LED's anode pin to the positive rail like this. Then, let's add the buttons, like so. After that, let's add the 200 ohm resistors onto the LED's red, green, and blue pins. Then, Add the 10K ohm resistors onto the button's ground pins and connect them to the ground rail of the breadboard. Then, let's add some hookup wires for the button's positive pins. After that, let's add some jumper cables for the Arduino connections. Okay, let's hook up the Arduino ground to the ground rail of the breadboard, followed by the 5 volts to the positive rail. Then, hook up the positive rail at the top as well. Now, let's connect the RGB LED to the Arduino. So, for the red pin, we're going to use this yellow wire. Connect it to Arduino digital pin number 2. Green is connected to digital pin 3 and blue to digital pin 4. After that, let's add the wires for the buttons. Put them right between the button's ground pin and pull down resistor. Connect the third button's pin to Arduino's digital pin number 5. Button 2 to digital pin 6. Button 1 to digital pin 7. After the wiring phase, next stop is the code. Here's the pretty basic code that I have made for this test. The R, G, and B here is where the pins of the RGB LED are connected. B, R, B, G, and B, B represents the pins for the momentary push buttons. B, R is the button for the red LED, B, G for the green, and B, B for the blue. On the setup, the RGB LEDs are set as outputs and the buttons as inputs. The RGB LEDs are also set to be off right at the very start. They are set to high because high means low if you are using a common anode RGB LED. Also, we're not going to use the loop function here, we're just going to leave it blank. So on the void red function, if digital read BR or button for the red is equal to 1 or high, digital write R or red LED will be turned to low or in this case high. Again, because we are using a common anode RGB LED. Meanwhile, the green and blue LEDs are turned to high or in this case low so that they are turned off whenever the red LED lights up. 
And that's it for the sample code really, pretty simple right? Now let's continue. So this is the button for the red LED, this is for the green, this one for the blue. Okay, let's see if our code would function properly. See that? Let me zoom in a little. Red, green, blue, red, green, blue, red, green, blue. Okay, everything seems to be working fine. And that concludes the non-Bluetooth testing phase. Now, after making sure that our basic code and circuit are both working as intended, let's add our pair of Bluetooth modules and just to be thorough, even though I have already shown how to do this on my previous Arduino project video, I'm going to do it again. First, let's set up the master module or device. This one will be our master. As you can see here, I have labeled it with M. Now let's add some female to male jumper cables for ease of access later. White for the RX, brownish gold for the TX, black for the ground, and red for the 5 volts or VCC. Put them onto the breadboard like this. The 5 volts pin should be connected to the upper breadboard rail for later. Then, add the 1K ohm resistor to the RX pin like this. Don't forget to make the resistor legs wide. Now let's add the 2K ohm resistor to the RX pin as well and connect the other leg to the ground pin. Then uh, for the TX pin, let's add the hookup wire. Add another one for the ground pin and another one. Add some more hookup wires then connect them to the upper and lower breadboard rails which will serve as our positive and ground rails. As usual, red for the positive and black for ground. After that, let's add the buttons. Connect the legs of the resistors from the buttons ground pins to the breadboards ground rail just like how we did it on the first testing phase. Now I'm going to add some more hookup wires here because unfortunately, this breadboard is quite limited when it comes to supply rails. So I'm going to have to connect the buttons positive pins to the positive rail at the top. After that, let's add some jumper cables and connect these things to the first Arduino. Okay, RX pin is the white wire, TX is the brownish gold. For the buttons, let's use yellow, green, and orange wires. Then, connect the RX pin to the Arduino TX, TX pin of the module to Arduino RX, button 1 to digital pin 2, button 2 to digital pin 3, and button 3 to digital pin 4. The wiring for the slave device is just the same as the master, so here it is. Now, the only thing that we need to connect to the slave module is the common anode RGB LED. Again, just do what we did on the testing phase. Connect the anode to the positive rail, add the three 200 ohm resistors, then connect them to the Arduino. Okay, connect the HCO5RX to Arduino TX, TX to RX, Red pin to digital pin 5, green to 6, and blue to pin 7. And yeah, that covers the wiring phase. After the wiring phase, let's proceed on to the setup process. We're going to use 80 commands to know the address of the slave module and bind it with the master module. To do that, we have to remove the VCC or 5 volts connection of both modules to power them down. Then, connect the RX pins of both modules to the RX pins of both Arduinos. Then do the same thing to the TX pins. Then press and hold the reset button right here before powering it up. Just connect the previously unconnected 5V pin to the positive rail of the breadboard and wait for the module to blink slowly like this. Then do the same thing to the other module. After that, upload the blank sketch to both Arduinos. Make sure that you have the correct ports, then open the serial monitors. COM3 is for the master module and COM4 is for the slave. Yours might be different though. Also, don't forget to set the serial monitors to 38,400 baud rate and both NL and CR. Alright, so type 80 and press enter. When the serial monitor responded with OK, that means our module is ready for AT mode. Do the same thing to the slave module or COM4. then. To make sure that we have the correct roles on each module, just type AT plus role followed by a question mark. I have already set this one up earlier. Master module's role is equal to 1 and slave is equal to 0. Now, to set your modules as slave or master, just type AT plus role equals 1 to set it up as a master and equals 0 if you want to set it up as a slave. Then, to make sure that the modules are at the same baud rate, just type AT plus UART followed by a question mark. 
Do the same thing on the slave module and there you go. They both have the same baud rate. Now let's say your other module has a different baud rate. 9600 for example. You can make it 38400 as well by entering the following 80 commands. 80 plus UR equals 38400 comma 0 comma 0 and press send or hit enter. And that's it. Now to know the address of the slave module, enter 80 plus ADDR followed by a question mark. After knowing the address of the slave module, copy and paste it onto a notepad or something because we're going to need that later. Now go to the serial monitor for the master module and enter 80 plus bind equals quotation mark followed by the slave module's address, add another quotation mark and replace the colons with commas. Okay, now that the master is binded to the slave module, close the serial monitors and blank sketches, disconnect the Bluetooth modules VCC from the positive rails, put back the RX and TX pins of the modules to the TX and RX pins of the Arduino, then upload our codes. Now let's talk about how the code works for a bit, alright? Granted that this is a really short and simple code, but I just wanted to explain the logic behind it. And since most of my projects are for beginners, I try to include a code explanation part on all of my future Arduino videos. Does that sound good? Let me know in the comments. Okay, let's begin. So remember that the one on the left side is the master code, and opposite that one is the slave code. And uh, BR, BG, and BB together with R, G, and B, just like the code that we have used on the testing phase, represents input and output pins for the buttons and RGB LED. Now, the input pins are on the master code because the master module will serve as our main controller. That's why it is responsible for reading the value of the input pins. Then, we declared the value that is stored on the button states or in this case, BR state, BG state, and BB state to zero. We use the byte here because we need to differentiate each button's serial write value. Now onto the setup part. Of course, both modules should have the same baud rate. And as I have said earlier, both buttons are set as inputs on the master and RGB pins are set as outputs on the slave. We have also set the RGB LED pins as high so that when the program starts, all LEDs are turned off. Also, unlike on the test code, we're going to use the loop function this time. On the loop function, BR state equals digital read BR means whatever value the digital read receives from BR or digital pin number 2 where button 1 is connected, whether a value of 0 or 1 is stored to the button state or in this case, BR state. Same thing goes for the button states below it. Now let's proceed to the if statement. If BR state is equal to high or the value of 1 from the digital read, it will print the text saying red on the serial monitor and send a value of R by using serial.write. And while the slave module is constantly waiting for available data, if serial available is greater than 0, whatever value the serial read receive will be stored to BR state. So then, if BR state is equal to R, it will print a text saying red on the slave module serial monitor and turn on the red LED or digital write low. And else if the BR state is equal to zero, meaning if the slave module received a zero from the master, it will turn off the LED or digital write high, okay? It goes like this, if the button is pushed or BR state is equal to high, it will send the value of R. The data will then be moved to Arduino TX pin or transmit, which will then be received by master module's RX pin or receiving pin. Then the master module will transmit the data and will be received by the slave module. The data will then be transmitted from the slave module and received by the other Arduino's RX pin. And if the BR state is equal to R, it will turn on the red LED. And there you have it. Both modules are now paired. The master module blinks twice first, followed by the slave module. Now let's see if our code will work. When I press this button, the LED should turn on the color red. When I press this, it should turn green. And this, blue. Alright, let's try the red button. There we go green and uh, blue all right let me uh, lower the ISO a little bit red 
green, blue, blue, green, red, red, blue, green, green, red, blue, green, red, blue. Hmm. I guess my code is missing something. It can't transmit data fast enough and freeze up then lose connection when I push the buttons fast. And when I try to press and hold the buttons, it flickers. Red. Green. Blue. See that? I'm not sure why that is happening. Maybe my code is wrong or I missed some 80 commands, but as of now, I don't really mind. Now, you can use either an RGB LED as well or some relays with the same codes that I have used here, if you ever you wanted to try this one out. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching and see you again next week, maybe.